Welcome to chapter four, e-marketing planning. And now it's time to make things happen. Whereas previously in chapter three, we talked about setting objectives. Planning is about taking those objectives, taking those goals, those desires, those dreams, and then laying out a path from here I am now to where I want to be to achieve those goals and objectives. So with planning in the internet, you'll see some people arguing against the existence of plans in the era of the internet because of the speed of the internet, the flexibility. What you'll find is that basically 20 years into the internet, plans have proven to be really useful. Having goals, timelines, objectives, Gantt charts, and all loads of project management have also proven to be effective. So whilst the internet was supposed to make everyone all about the reflex-driven reactive, it's turned out to be a lot more suited to planning. Also, there's scheduling software. And if there's one thing that makes planning really useful, it's when you can map out what you want to do for 20 weeks and then pre-code half of it to happen automatically so that some of the points of planning now is to work out where are my efficiencies and where are my effectiveness points of pre-organized, pre-planned and pre-prepared materials. There is also just one principle I'll qu quickly mention, that's the idea of ready, fire, aim. It was one of the big mantras of the internet of have a plan, do it, and then target afterwards, which assumes that you're using some form of wire guide or laser guide for your uh, whatever it was you're firing. You can do it, um, ready, aim, fire, ready, fire, aim, however you want to go, all of them start with plan. So a thing about a plan is that it can be very formal. It can be incredibly informal. What matters is that it works for you. Now, when you're tasked with producing a workable operational plan that you will implement over the course of a period of time, the more formal your plan, the easier it is to get marks for it and also for you to work with it. A critical element you want to be always thinking about when you're creating a plan is when I come back to this in eight, ten weeks time, will I be able to understand what I was thinking what I was intending, and can I measure that I actually achieved what I set out to do. So, let's talk about the planning process. It's a four-step framework. We're going to break up those steps. The key, where we're going to kick off from, is where are we now? That's where every plan starts. Every plan starts with a look around and go, where now? What's the situation currently? We then, the plan is to get us to where we want to go. And the way the e-marketing book is set up is to bring together the big picture objectives, the big strategic goals, and then roll through, steamroller through, and turn those strategies into objects, those objects into targets, those targets into marketing mix and implementation strategies and implementation guidelines, and then do stuff. So the whole aim here is to go from, I want to achieve X to doing stuff that will let you achieve X. So figure 4.1, basically this is the question of where we are, where we want to go, and the steps we need to take on each of the four. But what you also need to be aware of is that it's a cyclical process. Once we start doing and implementing marketing mix, spending resources, implementing, activating the implementation plan, we're going to also be activating the controls and the metrics to see that we're on the right way, we're on the right path, we're headed to where we're supposed to be going. And then we back that up with, well, now we know this information, the metrics, the controls, the timelines, we know more. We're now feeding back into the next situation analysis. So where we are now? Every situation analysis for the first time you do it is the hard part. You start with, 
a lot of legwork. You've got to figure out a lot of background material. Keep your notes. Always keep your notes. Keep your notes together. Keep your filing together. Because when you come back to do the situation analysis next time, you'll be building on what you already knew. So it's a situation analysis, a scan of the environment, and some market research. First step for a situation analysis is that you are trying to produce context. SWOT is meaningless. A situation analysis is entirely about giving yourself context. What is your market? What is your environment? What is the context you're operating in? And in those contexts, you're looking for opportunity. What can we capitalize on? What's out there that is there an opportunity? Is there an opening? Does an opponent have a weakness? What are we doing in the situation analysis is giving ourselves some room to think. You're also looking for threats and problems. You're looking for a sense of how the market is moving, what are the wider conditions in play. So this is why it's quite a broad start. It's not the end game. So in the environment scan, you're looking for your political arena and your legal arena to start with. Politics, very important for to e-marketers. Almost more important than it is for um, physical world marketers because e-marketing is a lot easier to run into political problems. A few years ago, the political environment was very pro-innovation technology. Let's go invest in a few billion dollars in having super fast broadband everywhere in Australia. Then the political environment moved to, could we get people off the internet? Because the internet allows for, the internet is not a proper place. It's not nice enough. And then we're switching back towards, well, innovation makes us money. We should make money, therefore internet. But all these political elements, pros and cons, all have significant impacts. You want to be mindful, you want to be monitoring. Same for laws, you want to see what laws are going to hit you fair and square where your wallet is, what laws are going to bind you, what laws operate around your product. So the, you want to bear, bring in uh, a set of imports, you know, you need to know at what point do you go from being a casual importer to requiring licenses, how, how does it all operate? Next up on the, the framework is in the environment scan, you're looking for the economy, if you're in the business of selling luxury goods to people with far too much discretionary income, you want to know what the market looks like and where it's trending. Social cultural, you want to look at what is the current condition in the marketplace, what are the trends, what's the societal trends, what are the sort of opportunities you can capitalize on now, and what sort of people should be the figurehead, front people, sample users, exemplars for your organization? Technology, obviously we're on the internet, so we've got to be mindful of what's happening, what's breaking, what's not working anymore, what's being announced forthcoming, what can we capitalize on, what is Apple up to, what mistake has Apple made this year that um, everyone will declare is the end of Apple as we know it. Next up, physical, physicality, distribution, physical shipping, anything about movement, and that includes fuel prices, that includes the general economy. It also includes a whole bunch of things like the political. Are retailers lobbying for barriers to be put onto internet-assisted physical commerce? These are things you want to be mindful of and be looking for. You also want to check the virtual environments. You want to see what's happening. Are there major servers opening up other major virtual worlds that are attracting attention. Has something managed to replace World of Warcraft as the default presumed large environment? Uh, did Star Citizen ever actually ship? All these sorts of environment things that give you a context to operate in. Because the key in all of this, when you're looking at these factors, you're looking at infrastructure, environment, interaction, exchange, what are the influences and impacts on there? How do they assist the objective you set out to achieve? What are they going to do in terms of enhancing or diminishing your opportunity? So the external environment, the environmental analysis are uh, context. 
The other thing I will get used to think about and do a lot in e-marketing is I'm going to ask you to combine. I'm going to ask you to take a look at, so you do the political scan, how does that impact these four areas? How do each of these combined elements, how does politics even play against virtual geography, against virtual economy, against virtual presence, against network and networks? If the NBN had come to fruition in its original structured design, the network of networks in Australia would be radically different from what it is today. What would that have done to geography, economy and presence? So you want to be thinking about these scenarios. You want to be using this as information to feed in to some of your decision making. So one of the things you'll notice throughout the chapter when it comes to the planning is input, throughput, output. These notes are here to help you. They're here to make life easier for you. So what you want to do is, on an input note, it's what sort of gathering do you need to do? What sort of data do you need to get your hands on? A throughput says where this information and decisions from this information is likely to impact. And the output is, how do I process data to knowledge? How do I make this useful for me? Now, the other thing that you need to, oh, not just need to, but want to. As an e-marketer, trend data is going to be really useful to you. It feeds into a whole bunch of your analysis and also gives you a chance to play some me too. Oh, look, something is trending. Does it fit the objectives of my organization to comment on this trend, participate in this trend, be part of this trend? Does that help? So there is a whole series of ways of tracking trends. The main thing you want to be doing is what is trending? Is it useful to me, to my brand, to engage? If the answer is yes, then you engage. If the answer is no, then you leave it alone. Do not engage for the sake of engagement, engage with purpose. So capitalizing on data, this is an important facet here, is that you're going to, you can generate enormous amounts of data that become overwhelming and useless. Or you can go and actually use the data. So if we take something like Instagram, there are top trending tags. We can look at those tags and say, do they fit my objective? If one of the tags happens to be um, around an event, say there's a big tag trend on the football tag and you are trying to promote a football team, good time to use that tag. If you happen to make designer chocolates, why bother tagging football? Football doesn't fit your tag. So don't randomly add things on there. Think again as a marketer, what does this data do to help my decision making, to help my plans and help me go from, here's the thing I'd like to do to here's the thing I'm achieving. So that's your first set. This requires you to do a bunch of research, reading around, observing, looking at things, and turning that data into useful information for yourself, saving the information, organizing the information, so you can then use it in steps two, three, and four. So the key is, first phase, where are we now? Benchmark, save data, but also that benchmark data you create now will make your metrics and measurement easier if you have a good snapshot of where you currently are, when you take a snapshot of where you are in 15 weeks time, you can subtract one from the other to see what's changed. And that is an effective metric.